hold you The veil tore before you You silenced the ghost of sin and grave The heavens are roaring The praise of your glory For you are raised to life again You have no
I invite the congregation to kindly stand, please. While we receive the body, Mr. Rondell Mongol will lead us in song. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The eternal God is your dwelling place, and underneath are the everlasting arms. His favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may tarry in the night, but joy comes with the morning. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in times of trouble. We blend our voices together as we sing, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine.
Let us bow together in the fellowship of prayer. Let us come to God in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, author of life and Lord of heaven and earth, we gather with the Ramkelawan family to celebrate and to give God thanks for the life of Roy Z. Ramkelawan. O risen conqueror, make us deeply aware of the shortness of human life. O God of compassion, whose love never fails, and who can turn the shadow of death into a new day. Help us now to receive your word with believing hearts, so that hearing the promises of scripture, we may have hope and be lifted out of this darkness, into the light and the peace of your presence, and gain wisdom for our days as we ascribe all honor and glory to you, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson comes to us from the book of Psalm. And reading for us is Presiding Elder Diane Ramjatan, also principal of the Charlieville Presbyterian School, where one of a hardworking member of staff is dear Ra Vincent Ramkilawan. So we now invite Miss Diane Ram, Ram Jatan to read for us Psalm 112 selected verses. Our scripture reading comes to us from Psalm Selection 112. It's entitled The Happiness of a Good Person. Praise the Lord. Happy is the person who honors the Lord, who takes pleasure in obeying his commands. The good man's children will be powerful in the land. His descendants will be blessed. His family will be wealthy and rich, and he will be prosperous forever. Light shines in the darkness for good people, for those who are merciful, kind, and just. Happy is the person who is generous with his loans, who runs his business honestly, a good person will never fail. He will always be remembered. He is not afraid of receiving bad news. His faith is strong and he trusts in the Lord. He is not worried or afraid. He is certain to see his enemies defeated. He gives generously to the needy and his kindness never fails. He will be powerful and respected. The wicked sees this and are angry. They glare in hate and disappear. Their hopes are gone forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Vincent Ramkilawan, son of Roycey and Joan, will bring to us the eulogy. Oh, what's his name? Oh, two people. Yeah. I also invite my sister to join me. Victoria. Hi. As I stand here, I am overwhelmed with the outpouring of friends and relatives that have made so many blessings to my family. And as we celebrate the life of my dad, I am humbled and quite frankly impressed at how many persons he has touched the lives of and by the gravity of love that has been given back to us. At this time, I could speak for myself and my sister too, but when I think of how he touched my life, the first words that come to mind is admiration. I admire that my father was hardworking, strong, loving, but gentle. He sacrificed so much to give us the life as most good parents promise, the better life that they would have not had. We used to jokingly comment how much I mirrored his passions. It started with me passing for the same high school, St. Benedict's College, and a love of art, just like he did as a teen, I'm sure Uncle Richard, his best friend, will reminisce a little bit later about that, where I have become a freelance graphic designer. 
He loved photography and filmography, and re I remember his pride in seeing a few of my pictures published in local newspapers and international media, even directing a television show under the PCTT. He loved music. It's a trait he shared with me, especially pretending to be a DJ ever so often. I blame my mother for not liking the son, so I didn't develop his love for sports. And even though we kind of shared a belly, okay, fine, mine bigger. <laughs> it's because, like him, I like to experience and experiment with recipes and the love of good food. These small things made the biggest impact on not just cherishing him as a father, but also as a friend. He told me, the teacher, that he almost signed up for teaching. And he liked the profession it showed that he had the traits for it, as we would always have these critical thinking discussions, discussions of local and world events, and he'd admit defeat once in a while when I pulled out my phone to show empirical evidence. However, he was always so versed in so many aspects of life that he has molded and inspired the man I could say I am today. Yes, I admire him because of the kind of father he was to us. He loved us very much, but he also instilled in us a core value system that defined who he was. And that was a man who kept promises, honored commitment. He was a man of integrity. Whenever we stumbled, he accepted our moaning and adversarial words. But when we were done, he fully expected us to see things through, all the way to the end, without the drama. Just do the thing now. I knew he is proud of my sister for all her hard work to be a successful entrepreneur with a large following of clients that have nothing but positive reviews for her work and ethics. Daddy, what would I miss the most? This is my love letter to you of being your daughter. It has to be your keen skill to understand or maybe it's the gifted way you listened, process, and solve situations you encountered with everyone. Perhaps it will be the way you enjoyed and loved the simple things in life. A wonderful song on the radio Sunday mornings. A good meme. A good meme. A favorite Western, like Half Gun Will Travel, your favorite actor, Richard Boone. We always watch it together every day after four. The sentimental way you sang Indian songs from your childhood and recent TikToks. No, it will definitely be, definitely be our father-daughter late night talks and the memories made preparing, cooking together. Although I'm the one cooking and you're the one who's washing the dishes. I will miss the joy and pride you exercise in the upkeep of our home and life. I will miss the laughter, the tears we created together. Daddy, this is the truth, is I will sorely and deeply miss you. My life will never be the same. But rest well knowing that you are the best father, friend, my biggest supporter, and superhero. To me, and I know to a lot of you, others, every one of you here, you ensured my life was molded with values, morals, wisdom, independence, so much love, strength, courage. Thank you for your selflessness. I am privileged to be called your daughter. I love you before, now, and forever. This is not goodbye, but till we meet again. Thank you. I agree, sis. Despite all of what I said, it is the small things that we will miss the most. Having him check my car, for example, before I leave to go anywhere, and the quick discussions we had before I left. Him being the first person to, when I go to see something, I want to share and get his opinion, and as Jill said, show off a TikTok video. 
It's knowing it was rendering a big video file for PCTT's moments of inspiration for TV6, and I could count on him to monitor the progress while I was still in school. Naming my favorite fruit tree by my third name, Kabir, and calling me to see the first blossoms of the promise of Pomerac soon. He was my Alexa, or Siri. I would share my entire week schedule with him, just so we could synchronize and probably get a chance for me to convince him for a shopping line later in the week. It's him walking into my room, finding a seat on my couch so that we could share something funny or interesting or bothersome that happened in his day and us being able to vent less like father and son but like brothers to each other. Him being my best friend and though it's hard to say goodbye to a best friend, my father, seeing the light fade from his face on that Good Friday, it was the joy of knowing he passed among his closest friends, his dearest friends, doing something he dedicated his recreational happiness in. I do not feel loss, but joy that my dad lived a life not only I could be very proud of, that my mom could be very proud of, and everyone who knew him could be proud of. And I wish that they had a dad as perfect as him. Thank you. Thank you, Victoria and Vincent. A father's love we will never forget. His moral values, his simplicity, his kindness, his friendship. And so we thank God for the way he impacted on his children's life. And the memories will help that is etched deep within their hearts to continue this journey of faith together. We blend our voices as we sing in Christ's saloon in Christ alone.
brother-in-law and father of Sanya Bihari, Ruben Bihari. No, I will take off my mask, otherwise my glasses got fo gets fogged. <laughs> Um, my name is Ruben Bihari, but as many people in the program, I'm better known, has a better known name, better known as Richard. It is in, Johnny was my Sarubai. I hope I said that correctly because try, trying to find Sarubai and the meaning of it on Google to know whether it's something Trinidadian or whether it's a, a real name, but I couldn't find it. So we're going to assume that it's correct because I think people know what that means. We, we both married sisters. It is a pr privilege to be able to reflect on Johnny as a friend and to represent the many people whose lives he touched in sports one have been deeply saddened by his passing. Johnny was a childhood friend who became my best friend during the first half of our lives. We went to the primary school next door, the Reformed Presbyterian School together. Our normal trip was, I lived in Railroad Road, I had to walk up the road on Main Road, meet Johnny at the junction of Hall Street, and then we walk up the road together, and on evenings we go back the long way, the more fun way, through Sand Road to the factory, then we pass the post office to check for letters, although we know there were none, we'd still go and ask. Then we'd stop by Krishna Bertie, Danny, Danny's house, he was living and, and check out the cashew tree. Then we would go by my house, check out the sapadillas, and then Johnny and the last person the remaining with him, who would be Ramchan, would then go home. We enjoy the rainy season especially. Like boys, we love to walk up the road in the rain, splashing in the, all the puddles. Bare feet preferably, unless our mothers insisted that we go to, go to school with slippers. Um, our books safely enclosed in uh, Ro Robin Hood plastic bags in which flour was sold. And our head and clothes uh, covered securely in the clear plastic bags that his father got when he bought cane salt. For his father was a cane farmer. He was quite the artist, as Vin said, who drew and colored the Marvel comic book heroes that we all still know today. Spider-Man was a favorite, Daredevil another one, Fantastic Four. Uh, yeah, he drew those in our co copy books. We were in the same common entrance class of 1967, passing the exam at the same time, and he went on to St. Benedict's, the same college that Vince has um, went to, um, which was at that time the best footballing con um, college in the country. Our friendship grew in our teenage years through sports. Sorry, reverence. The closest we came to church was when Brother Mohan, the village pastor, passed around, picking up all the little kids and taking us to Sunday school at Woodry's at the end of Paul Street. We played all the sports that were common at the time, cricket, table tennis, football. And Johnny was better than most of us at all three. He developed his, his back of the hand leg breaks, his off spin and medium pace at the back of the Hindu temple and on the main roads in front of Puran's shop. He was and continued to be, even in the later years, an aggressive batsman, never letting the bowlers dominate. To play table tennis at nights, we had run an extension cord from my house over the TNTech wires, and I do not recommend that anybody try that these days, we didn't know better, <laughs> into the center, which didn't have electricity at that time, hook up one bulb, and then play tennis all night. A typical football day was play football in the morning, bathe in the Guarcar River at our favorite spots, Poke and Mud Pool were our two favorites, suck cane to get energy, play more football, bathe in the river again, and go home for quarreling or licks from our mothers because our skin by then was coated in mud. One of the mysteries for many of our newer players is why Johnny wasn't in the famous reform football teams of the 70s and 80s since he was such an excellent player. 
It all stemmed from a competition in which he played as an under-15 team in an under-19 competition. He used to play the left wing at that time and got his hand broken in a match. And for some years, his parents banned him from playing football. So that's why we never had Johnny in our, any of our famous reformed pictures. As we became young adults, there were four of us who were sometimes called the Four Musketeers because we were doing everything together. They were Ramchan, his, his, neighbor next, his immediate neighbor, Prince, his neighbor who was one house away, Johnny and I who lived uh, on another street, probably the furthest from any of the others. We started college around the same time, that's all four of us, and all started to work at the same time. So we had more money than we had ever known before and spent a lot of it on things that I will not talk about now. <laughs> he spent the most time with his neighbor Ramchan, who would know many more secrets than I, for the, from the alignment spot by the standpipe under the breadfruit tree by John's house. His first job was at Alam's supermarket, packing groceries, where he worked with Prince. With my first car, a Hillman Minx, we explored all parts of Trinidad and Tobago. Because a minx carried as many people as could fit, Johnny sat, always sat closest to me because he had to change the gears when I mashed the clutch because I couldn't reach the gear lever. He was always passionate about music. Us two alone sometimes played strange music to the village, such as Linda Ronstadt, so loudly in the early mornings of the morning, hours of the morning from my house in Railway Road that people thought that there had been a party in the, in the village when it was only two of us. He retained that passion for music, as our DJ Black Sheep Wayne would attest, since he knows whenever Johnny was present, he would always be suggesting that he play different songs. He had a touch of the rebel and could always provide a different view. We were never invited again to hunt after we went one night fully equipped with a cassette player to play music and KFC because we knew the hunters weren't going to catch anything and told the hunters to call us when they were ready to move to a new area. Johnny always loved to talk to people. He worked for some time as a timekeeper at the Reform Sugar Factory and developed relationships with many of the older people in the village. He knew where they lived, what their problems were, and the intricate connections between the families in the village. We married sisters, Joan and Glenda, around the same time and drifted a little apart as we had kids and focused on family and work and friends came last. We developed a new relationships and he became very close to Rai, Ramesh, Steve, Venkat, and Venice, as well as all the other players. But these were the ones that he was particularly close to. As we played fet match football all over the country, and games always seemed to finish around 2 in the morning, even if they started at 4 p.m. on the previous day. Some of those, uh, Rai, Ramesh, and Venkat, were part of the, and Ramchan, were, part, were the pallbearers who came in earlier today. I have shared stories of his early years, but they would have a lot more stories about his recent escapades. Our football team was called Reform United in the early days, and then simply Reform for many years. Johnny is the person who changed our name to Sporting Reform because he wanted to spice things up. So he had it printed on the team's jerseys without telling any of us. So we, all, we have something that we'll always remember him by whenever we hear or see the name Sporting Reform. Two nights ago, at an impromptu gathering of his friends, his daughter Jill asked us to say three words about her father. Time and time again, the words like being a mentor, a people person with personal relationships with everyone present, a good and caring person came up and was best summarized by Steve, who said at the end, he will be surely missed. Earlier this year, a number of researchers came together and did a comprehensive review 
of near-death experiences in an effort to find out what really happens when you die. Near-death experiences are the stories that people who had nearly died said about their experiences. There was consensus that the first thing that most people said, first thing that happened was a separation from the body and a heightened sense of consciousness. Although it was sad to see him go, we are comforted by the knowledge that he died without suffering, doing something he was most passionate about in a place that would be like home to him, on the grass, on the playing field, surrounded by people he has known and cared about all his life. He must have been pleased as he hovered over the ground. And as Davy, one of our players said two nights ago, he left the ground with a smile on his face. He will be missed. Thank you. I'm sure we will we have, would have learned a few things today that we would not have known about our friend and member of the community of reform. Good old days, I would say, with Richard and the rest of the guys. Good old days as you bring back childhood memories. We have lost all those days the good old days and we thank you for reflecting the life so beautifully of our brother Johnny Roycey Ramkilawan. At this time I invite Reverend Annabelle Lala Ramkilawan, Minister of the Curep St. Joseph Pastoral Region to lead us in a prayer. On a day like today, it is difficult to pray for people you have built relationship with. I have known the family since I was the minister here. I served here and left to go to the office of moderator. And this family has supported me on that journey of moderatorship. So we built a relationship. Their daughter, Sanya, is almost like a daughter to me too. So. Vincent, as you said, I'm your adopted mother. So I pray today for you all. Let us come to God in prayer. Merciful Father and Lord of all life, we praise you that we are made in your image and reflect your truth and light. We thank you today for the life of Johnny, your son, for the love she rece he received from you and showed among us. We thank you, Lord, for blessing him with wisdom, knowledge, kindness, and the ability to befriend individuals easily. You promised, O oh Lord, that when your servants depart this life, you will receive them into the eternal rest. As we come, we come not sad, but celebrating the life of Johnny, a life well lived, a life that was fulfilled, a life that meant a great deal to those he encountered and journeyed with on this life. Lord, we thank you for all his friends, 
all his neighbors, all his family members who were a pilgrim with him on this journey of life. And the memory that is painted in their hearts today. We thank you, Lord, for the family life you afforded him with his beloved Joan and his children, Vincent and Victoria. The joy of any parent is the birth of a child and the journey they share with their child as they grow and the molding that takes place. Lord, you have blessed the journey with all that life can give. And you have blessed us with the opportunity of knowing Johnny and being his friend, being someone he trusted and loved. Today, we do not say goodbye to him, but we place him into your loving arms. Take care of him until we meet again. Celebrate life, the life of Johnny, and the blessings he received from Almighty God, in whose name we pray today. Amen. Rondell Mongol, a gifted and talented young man, will now render an anthem to us in song.
Our New Testament lesson comes to us from the letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 31 to 39. Reading for us is Elder Charmaine Bainey of the Reformed Presbyterian Church and also a relative of the Ramkelawan family. Reading from the book of Romans, Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 31 to 39. Let us hear the word of God. God's love in Christ Jesus. In view of all this, what can we say? If God is for us, who can be against us? Certainly not God, who did not even keep back his own son but offered him up for us all. He gave us his son. Will he not also freely give all things? Who will accuse God's chosen people? God himself declares them not guilty. Who then will condemn them? Not Christ Jesus who died, or rather who was raised to life and is at the right hand of God, pleading with him for us. Who then can separate us from the love of Christ? Can trouble do it, or hardship, or persecution, or hunger, or poverty, or danger, or death? As the scripture says, for your sake we are in danger of death at all times. We are treated like sheep that are going to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we have complete victory through him who loved us. For I am certain that nothing can separate us from his love, neither death nor life, neither angels or other heavenly rulers or powers, neither the present nor the future, neither the world above nor the world below. There is nothing in all creation that will ever be able to separate us from the love of God, which is ours through Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. We listen to the message of comfort proclaimed to us by our minister, Reverend Dr. Randall Summer, minister of the Marabella Bonaventure Pastoral Region and immediate past principal of St. Andrew's Theological College. A blessed good morning to all. Permit me to take a few seconds to express deepest condolences on my own behalf, on, on behalf of my family, to this very beloved family. And by extension, the session, all the local boards, all the members of this pastoral region, the Ramkelawan family is no stranger. Everybody knows Vincent. And Vincent know half of Trinidad and the other half know Vincent. It is a sad moment. And when I got the news Saturday evening, I was deeply, sorry, Friday evening, I was deeply concerned. So, you know, putting things in place and so on. But Vincent did a lot of the work he described himself as stoic, so that's something we share. And um, everything just came together with our collective support. Who is against us? What separates us? Let us pray. Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts 
be acceptable unto you? Paul puts these questions to his listeners. What is against us? Who is against us? What separates us? And perhaps rhetorically he goes on to answer the question. But if we were to answer these questions on a, a personal level, what would we see? Depression, failure, sickness, loneliness, overwhelming circumstances around us, feeling to give up. Earlier on in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, Paul states, all things work together for good to those who love God. All things work together for good to those who love God. And then lower down in verse 38, which Charmin read, Paul states, nothing can separate us from God's love. Nothing. You know, my friends, we, we are here today because we grieve. We, we grieve with the family. We grieve for ourselves because whether we are here to support the family, or whether we are here as extended family or as sport mates of Johnny, or just being sharing community space with him, we share some aspect of grief. And grief for each one of us is different. So grief, my friends, is part of life experience. But after what happened yesterday, what we celebrated yesterday, Grief is also part of the resurrection experience. And I want us to hold on to that. Because Jesus himself went through his own personal agony, his own personal grief. And his, peer, his mother, his beloved siblings, his disciples, they struggled with their own grief. But the grief that we share today is part of the resurrection experience. It is part of the portal to eternal life. Jesus himself agonized about getting out of it. He prayed to his father, Lord, let this cup pass from me. Lord, I don't want to die. It's not my time. You know, friends, I don't have to tell you, but we do live in a world of trouble. Pandemic. Some people are saying World War Three has started. All around us, we see examples of human darkness. We battle we struggle with natural events. Recently, the floods in South Africa. And you know, my dear friends, there comes a time for all of us when human intellect, human reasoning fails us. All the knowledge in the world, all the common sense in the world, all the rationalizing in the world is insufficient. So there comes a time like this when faith has to take over. Nothing else but faith. And Paul in his letter to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the famous chapter about love, he explains in verse 12 that we see things vaguely. We look in a mirror and the mirror is covered in some sort of 
cloudy dust. So we don't see fully. But there will come a time when we will see completely. Where we will understand completely. Everything makes sense. Everything comes together like what was celebrated yesterday. Now is the time, my friends, to look at life, our life, the life that we have as a people. We look at Johnny's life with the eyes of faith. It is the eyes of faith and the heart of faith that will help us with our grief. Grief is difficult because while we hold on to our faith, there's this constant pulling and tugging between emotions and faith. Our emotions provide the grief, but our faith provide the promises of Jesus. So we do not grieve, as Paul said to the Thessalonians, we do not grieve as those who have no hope. Because we have hope. And for those who love God, according to Paul, all things work together. Everything falls in place. We can now make sense. We can now connect the dots. So, as our two friends, as Vincent and Victoria and Mr. Bihari, shared with us the experiences of a father, the experiences of, her, of a friend, but also significantly when we went back to the Sunday school days, we recalled experiences of faith. So to see with the eyes of faith, we are invited to remember our experiences of faith. Worship, the annual prayer meetings that some families have, the exciting moments of church life, be it a bazaar or an anniversary service or Christmas Day service, where everyone comes together and our faith is lifted up because our faith rubs off on one another. And this is where, friends, we experience the love of God. We experience the love of God in Christ and through Christ. So therefore, nothing can separate us and Paul boldly states, for I am convinced. For I am convinced. What convinces us today? What convinces us today about our faith? What convinces us today about the promises of Jesus? In my father's house are many rooms, and I go and prepare a place for you. And then I will come back and take you unto myself. Paul is very bold. No circumstance can separate us. No circumstance. And Paul is not speaking philosophically. Paul is not speaking intellectually. Paul is speaking from his own experience. Paul is speaking from his own experience about the amazing love of God because when you look at his previous life, he didn't deserve it. Paul, formerly Saul, used to persecute the Christians. But the resurrection truth has come down to him. So we could even say the amazing love of God and the amazing grace of God. That is the resurrection truth. And the resurrection truth abides with us. Because yesterday we sang, 
Jesus Christ is risen today. Hallelujah. Christ is risen indeed. Yes, friends, today we acknowledge, as we say farewell to Johnny, as we share in solidarity with Joan, Victoria, and Vincent, and all other close relatives, the love of God for Johnny, for us, for each other, for the world. The cross of Christ probably still stands on Calvary, but it is empty. And the grave is empty as well. To tell us, dear friends, that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Let us move on in faith, knowing, believing that our brother Johnny is at perfect peace. And as the hymn says, safe in the arms of Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are reminded that nothing in life nor death can separate us from the love of God because we serve a risen Savior, a Savior who has promised us life eternal. To lead us in the prayer of comfort, Reverend Sanya Bihari, Minister of the Guaico Pastoral Region and niece of Johnny. We bow together in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, you are father and mother to all of us. You gave us birth in ways. You brought us to life. And you are with us through every step. And so today, oh God, we give you thanks for Dolly. We give you thanks for Amkilawan. We give you thanks for the way in which they raised their child to become the man that he was. We thank you, dear God, for all of his siblings, for Sheila and Dudu, for Boise, Ronnie, Tara, Boyan, and Randy. We praise you, dear God, for their relationship as siblings, supporting one another, giving each other strength. And we thank you, dear God, for all of his adopted siblings, all of the men in his life who played just as strong a role in his development as his biological ones. Lord, we ask for your comfort to be upon all of these siblings by blood and by choice. That you surround them with your Holy Spirit and remind them, O oh God, that you love us and call us to love one another in ways that transcend any of the normal bonds. You remind us that there is no greater love than to lay down our life for our friends. And so we thank you, dear God, for the ways in which he mentored others, the ways in which he raised others who were not his own. And we ask, oh God, that as they feel that void in their lives, that you help them to remember all of those powerful memories of the laughter, of maybe a tear, of skinned knees and broken bones, but also lots of tables and glasses, lots of time spent together just in conversation. Lord, we lift up before you now his own family for his wife, Aunt Joan, 
for Vince and for Jill, and for the important piece of the puzzle that he filled in all of their lives. We ask, oh God, that you comfort Auntie Joan, that in her times of sorrow, when she thinks about him, and if there are any regrets, that you help her to forgive him and forgive herself. Let her, O oh God, hold on to the love that they shared. And as she builds a life anew, remind her, O oh God, that the past never fully fades away, but it's something to be cherished. Lord, we know that there is no way to replace a father especially the bond that he had with both Vince and Jill. But we ask you, dear God, to lift up others all around them, to remind them that they are not alone, to remind them, O oh God, to lean on each other and to lean on the people you have placed around them that as they make this transition fully out of, not quite childhood, but being a son and being a daughter, that you will give them all the strength that they need to learn when to say no and take that time to grieve alone, but also to take that chance and let this outpouring of love that we feel here today show them up. Lord, we pray for all those who knew him through the village and through his work. All those who knew him just because of his relationships with others. And we thank you, dear God, for all the ways in which he challenged our normal sense of thinking and he was so open to learning about technology and learning about trends and learning whatever it is that was happening in his world. And we thank you, dear God, for that curiosity, that desire for knowledge. And we know, oh God, that as he leaves us, that this time is one for us to remember that we still have time. Help us, O oh God, to look to his life and to seek the happiness of a good man or a good woman. To become someone who is proud of their children to become someone who was their greatest supporter ever, to become the kind of person that persons will love and recognize for even their silent contributions and support. And as we seek to be a little bit more like him and to keep those memories alive, we know that your spirit will equip us with everything we need to ensure that the days to come will not just be filled with despair in this valley of the shadow of death, but instead be filled with hope for a brighter tomorrow. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who taught us to say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
our closing hymn, Be Not Afraid. Following the hymn, I invite our moderator, the Reverend Joy Abdul Mohan, to preside over the benediction. of me if I do not express on behalf of the Synod, officers of Synod, church workers, colleagues in ministry, and especially the Moments of Inspiration team, the Communications Committee with whom Vincent closely works, I extend our sincerest condolences to Sandra, Joan, affectionately called Vincent and Victoria, and all the relatives and friends who are very near and dear to this family. And you have heard from the minister, past ministers, you have heard from families, and surely, albeit death is that pervasive reality which manipulates life forever. As Reverend Salma said, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have a living hope of eternal life for all who believe. To God be the glory. Let us come to God in prayer. 
unto him who is able to keep us from falling. We commend, O God, your servant, Roisy Johnny Ramkelaman, that he may be received into your everlasting arms and kingdom, where he will rest eternally, continue to comfort his dear family and loved ones, and all of us gathered here as we continue to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord, in whom we have that living hope of everlasting and eternal life. And now may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon us. And may the Lord grant us peace both now and forevermore. Thank you all very much for coming and attending. Please remain standing as the casket is wheeled out of the church. It will be open on the porch of the church for a few moments, and those who wish to pay their final respects can do so and also greet the family. We ask you to be, respe be respectful and do file past the casket in a very orderly way. Thank you very much for your cooperation. Again, please remain standing. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now. blind but now I see twas grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved how Thank you.
Thank you. 